We call Smilodon the king of the Ice Age, a predator armed with oversized sabers, powerful forelimbs, and a reputation built on fear. But what if that crown belongs to someone else? Because while Smilodon hunted the frozen landscapes of North America, it wasn't alone. Sharing that same territory was another apex predator, larger, heavier, and built for dominance, the American lion. For nearly 10,000 years, these two giants lived side by side. They hunted the same prey. They competed for the same kills. And occasionally, their paths would have crossed. Today, we're not comparing myths. We're examining the fossil evidence, biomechanics, and hunting strategies to answer one question. If these two Ice Age Titans met face to face, who would walk away? Before we begin, choose your side. Team Saber or Team Lion. The American Lion, Panthera atrox, was not just a bigger version of today's lions. It was one of the largest cats to ever exist. Standing over four feet tall at the shoulder and weighing up to 420 kilograms, this animal was built like a living battering ram. Its skull was massive, its jaws were powerful, and its brain-to-body ratio suggests a highly adaptable predator. Unlike ambush specialists, the American lion was a generalist hunter. It chased prey across open plains. It relied on endurance, coordination, and raw strength. This was a cat designed to overpower opponents, not just surprise them. Smilodon was different, shorter, stockier, and built like a heavyweight grappler. Weighing around 280 kilograms, Smilodon traded speed for muscle. Its most famous feature, the elongated upper canines, could grow over seven inches long. But those teeth were not blunt weapons. They were precision instruments. Smilodon didn't bite and hold like modern cats. It pinned prey using massive forelimbs, then delivered a carefully placed bite to soft tissue. This was not a brawler. This was a specialist. Imagine the encounter. A cold Pleistocene plain. A large carcass lying between them. The American lion arrives first. It stands taller. It controls distance. Its posture alone is a warning. Smilodon responds differently. Low to the ground. Four limbs tense, waiting for the opening. The lion uses intimidation, height, movement, positioning. It wants Smilodon to back away without a fight. Smilodon doesn't rush, because it can't afford to. The American lion strikes from range, wide swipes, heavy blows, constant pressure. This is a boxing match, and the lion controls it. Smilodon's goal is singular. Close the distance. If it can grab the lion's neck, if it can pin the body, if it can place its bite correctly, the fight ends quickly. But here's the problem. Smilodon's sabers are fragile. They are not designed to hit bone. A misplaced bite against the shoulder, a collision with the skull, and those teeth could break. And a Smilodon without its sabers is no longer dangerous. So who wins? In most scenarios, the American lion. Not because Smilodon was weak, but because the lion had margin for error. The lion could survive a poorly placed attack. Smilodon could not survive a broken weapon. Size matters, reach matters, and adaptability matters. Smilodon was an assassin. The American lion was a heavyweight enforcer. The saber tooth might end the fight faster, but the lion could end it more often. And yet, neither won in the end. Both Smilodon and the American lion vanished around 10,000 years ago. Not because one defeated the other, but because the Ice Age world they ruled disappeared beneath them. Changing climates, shrinking habitats, and increasing pressure from humans. The real victor wasn't tooth or claw. It was the environment itself. But here's the thing. Even the American lion had something it feared. A predator that didn't roar, didn't charge, and didn't fight on four legs. And that story is coming next. Did you agree with the verdict? Defend your champion in the comments 
and subscribe to Primeval Lore for more battles from Earth's deepest past.